Hi, I'm Denny Lewis, AT Controls in Cincinnati. In today's video, we're going to do the basic calibration of our EPR 1000 series positioner along with our travel stop adjustment on our butterfly valve. A few tools you will need for today's calibration. We have a 4 to 20 handheld calibrator, flathead screwdriver, and the 11 16 wrench to adjust our travel stops. Also, clean shop air. Okay, for today's travel stop adjustment, we're going to introduce air on the actuator. This package is sized for an 80 psi air supply, so we need to set our bench regulator to this air supply. This is our counterclockwise stop and our clockwise stop. So we're going to run this thing counterclockwise by pulling on our counterweight kind of manually. And you want a nice parallel disc here, a straight through flow, which that looks fine. But, but I'm going to demonstrate how to adjust that. Before adjusting your travel stops, you must relieve the spring force that is on your travel stops. This being our open stop, you have five degrees positive and five degrees negative travel on the open and closed stop. As you see, that is not parallel, so we will back our open stop off a turn or two. That looks good. Now leave it open. Lock our stop down. Clockwise stop works the same way. You're looking for a nice even seat in the valve, which just looks fine. If not, same, same theory with the closed stop. You have a plus five or negative five adjustment on your stop and adjust the same way. Now we're going to do the basic calibration of the positioner. This is our basic EPR 1000 4 to 20 milliamp DC control voltage positioner. Your electrical connection, positive and negative. Air supply connection, your out one, out two, zero adjustment screw, span adjustment screw, travel cam, and your pilot valve. We offer polyethylene tubing, which is our standard. It also, you can also get stainless steel tubing, copper tubing, and all our positioners, we put a filter regulator on and tube them up double acting. You can tube them up single or double acting. Basically, we do it just to limit the amount of contamination that's introduced into the actuator through the atmosphere. That's why we also put a filter regular on all positioners that we sell. Um, this positioner is for our 2R300SR actuator, which is a rotary actuator. You can also get this for linear, linear actuators. For this demonstration, obviously our 2R300SR and our 6-inch resiliency to butterfly valve. Okay, now I'm going to start hooking everything up just for our basic calibration. 420 milliamp handheld calibrator. Positive and negative. Now I'm going to introduce the air on the actuator. We want to set our regulator to approximately 80 psi. And now we're going to start the basic calibration procedure. Just one more thing I'd like to explain is your tubing on your actuator. Your out one port goes to your counterclockwise drive port on your actuator. That would be for single acting. Like I said, we tube it up for double acting. So your out one goes to your counterclockwise, and your out two goes to your clockwise port. Now, turn your calibrator on. I'm going to start at our 4 milliamp position. And what you do is you adjust your thumb screw clockwise till the gauge begins to climb. And once you notice it's climbed, you back it off counterclockwise till it falls nice and slow. 
down to the zero position. One other thing about this position is your, your zero and your span are interactive. That means if you adjust one, you typically have to adjust the other. Now we're going to run to the 20 milliamp position. And one way to check for your full open in your 20 milliamp position is your counterweight here. You can pull towards you. And if you don't hear any air bleed off, that means your actuator and position are in the full open position. Now we're going to check our mid position by going back down to 4 milliamps, then to 12. Now what you're looking for in your mid position is a nice 45 degree angle on our disc. Or if the, the package is, not, is in line and you cannot see your disc or your ball in your valve, a reference point on our travel cam is the mid line here should be somewhere in line with the bearing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's just a reference point. So now we're going back down to four milliamps. And you're looking for a nice even seat in your valve, which we have here, a nice even distance on this side to this side. Back to 20 milliamps, and you want a nice straight through parallel to the actuator flow pattern. Okay, we'll go back down to 4 milliamps. Now I'm going to throw this position all out of whack by just turning the screws and basically uncalibrating the actuator. So you're going to start at your 4 milliamp position again. You're out one gauge, turn clockwise. So it begins to climb. Back it off counterclockwise. Comes down nice and slow. Until our 20 milliamp position. And check with our counterweight. It looks good, but I know because I adjusted this that it is open way too soon, meaning at 15 milliamps this package is open. So we have to adjust the span back out of this package. By doing that, you adjust your span screw towards the negative. There's too much span in it. Now we go back down to 4 milliamps. As you notice, there's pressure on our out one gauge at four milliamps, which you do not want. So I'm going to turn this counterclockwise until the gauge falls to zero. Now clockwise until it starts to climb and then back it off. You're just fine tuning, basically. Okay, back to 20 milliamps now. Now I'm going to pull the counterbalance towards me to see if any air bleeds off, which it did, meaning you need a little more span in this to fully load the actuator with air for your open position. So now you're going to turn the screw counterclockwise towards the plus sign, maybe a turn, turn and a half, and back down to our zero or four milliamps. Same as before, clockwise till the gauge climbs, back it off till it goes to zero nice and easy. Back to 20. Check with the counterweight, pull toward you. And no air has bled off on the actuator. That means you are in a full open position. Now we're going to check our mid one more time.
by going to 4 milliamps, then 12. And as I stated before, if everything's in line already, you can use this for a base as your midline to your little bearing here. Or, like here, you can simply look at the disc on our valve. And you look for a 45 degree angle, which that's fine. So at this point, this package is calibrated. Basically, you are adjusting the zero in span, fine tuning the package to your, your calibration needs. So now we're going to just turn the power off to the calibrator, unhook our air line, and that is your basic calibration of your EPR 1000 positioner. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brian Wright. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful. We always have engineers and our highly qualified technicians at the ready for any of your questions. For further information, go to atcontrols.com or call us at 513-247-5465. As always, we thank you for your business.